there. I know, we know that the name Brandon Ayuk right now is a little exhausting to you. Guess what? Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch agree. They agree with you. And we've been taking your calls all day on what the Niners should do now because today there has been an adjustment. There is new information. There is new emotion. And we'd like to take you through it. Um, because Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch both spoke today. Um, Brandon Ayuk has been med- medically cleared. You may, I bet some of you are like, I don't know he was hurt. Exactly. Well, he might not have been. But as part of the whole hold-in process, you can air quotes, be injured, and therefore you're not getting fined or you're not subject to fines. And so, yes, at one point, Kyle Shanahan, a week or two ago, said, he's got a, I think he's got a back injury. Well, he's been cleared to play. The tweet started this morning that he was expected that the understanding during these negotiations was that if you got to today, post-roster cuts and actual week one preparations – that he would practice. Kyle spoke. John spoke. Here's what they said. Press conference obviously started with a question to Kyle on whether or not Brandon was going to be out there today. And um, here's what he said. I've been working on the 53, the practice squad. I haven't talked to him. Uh, I know he's been cleared by our doctors. Um, So I hope that he's out there practicing today. All right. I hope he's out there practicing today. Kyle, would you discipline him if he's not? Since your doctors have said he's healthy, if he refuses to practice, would you discipline him? Uh, I'll deal with that when that happens, if that happens. So just to clarify, if he practices, that's not any sign that anything is close one way or the other in terms of a contract extension? Uh, no. Okay. John Lynch. Does him practicing today or not impact contract discussions? The only dynamic that's changed here that would make him practice today? Uh, yeah, in theory, yeah. If he does not practice, chooses not to, will he then we'll, then we'll deal with that. Yeah, then we'll deal with that. And he starts to answer it before the question is even over, which is always a telltale sign to me when someone is very, very, Annoyed, very yeah. ticked off. No doubt. Right? Yeah. Okay, last one, and then we'll hop in here. In 888-957-9570, what you want the Niners to do, what should they do? Um, listen to Lynch talk when he was asked if negotiations have been maddening. Yeah, you um, you know, fortunately, there's 90 players here. There's preseason games. There's the work of getting better, and uh, that goes into putting a team together. But no question about it, when you've got some of your better players, two of them in particular, that aren't out there, you're you know, and and you know that's your job. Yeah, you take a lot of a lot of pride in that, and um, you know, I I think. You know, one thing, we got a lot of really good players and we've rewarded a lot of good players and that makes things tougher at times. But, um, you know, I, I remain optimistic. We'll find a way to put the best squad out there and really um, happy with where this team's at and, uh, you know, what we do have to offer. The players out here that have been here are working really hard. We got a lot of love for the two guys that aren't and we'll continue to work on that to try to bring that to a resolution. The other two quotes that you need to know about, and we're going to grab them for you here shortly, is John Lynch was quoted as saying, at some point, you've got to go play. And the other thing, which was the passive-aggressive portion of the show, is he was asked about Terrace Marshall. Some of you will have heard of him. He's a wide receiver from LSU that was a second-round pick four years ago. The Niners signed him to the practice squad today. And in the process of being asked about that addition, Lynch said something along the lines of, here is a great place for a wide receiver. This is where wide receivers play their absolute best. And so is that a Terrace Marshall answer that's actually about Brandon? That's up to you to decide. My answer would be yes. Yeah, it's an answer basically saying, Brandon, you can go somewhere else, but you're never going to be as good as you are here. Just like Terrace Marshall Jr., is going to be the best version of himself here with San Francisco because that's what we do here with the 49ers. You are your best when you're here. So that was a very interested kind of a backhanded shot at Brandon Ayuk and his trade request. Um, there's one more Lynch that I didn't get to, and this was the absolute opening back and forth, uh, I think, with Matt Mayoko about – uh, Brandon Ayuk and, and what today's expectation was. Reports or suggestions that Brandon Ayuk was going to practice today. To your knowledge, 
Is he going to be out there? We'll see. I think you'll see right with me. Uh, I know he's he's here today, and uh, that's the expectation. Okay. So, by the way, let's add in one thing we haven't talked about, which is that John Lynch said right there, I think he's here today. He's here today. Right, but he's Where not he? going to practice. <laughs> exactly. Is he deep in the catacombs at uh, 4949 Centennial, and he's just not going to go out to practice? He's here today, but he's not out on the practice field. That, to me, becomes a, another interesting part of maybe the hold in. He thinks if he shows up and he doesn't practice that he's not subject to be fined. I don't know what kind of advice he's getting, but if he, in fact, is in the building and not practicing, that becomes even more of a of a middle finger to the organization of a guy who's been cleared to play, and yet he's not out there playing. So that's a weird one for me. Because, yeah, if you're there, go ahead and jump on out and, and, and practice. If you're healthy enough to do it, go go play. Where are you on this? Where are you on this? On the I mean, part of it? Answer our own question. You're the Nile. Like, I, I, I've already clearly said, I'm I, like, as of Monday, I was quote-unquote done. Yeah. But, like. I'm done negotiating. I mean, that that's it. If you want to play on your fifth-year option, come play football. And if you don't want to play for $14.1 million, and you don't want to practice, that's okay. That's your right. We don't have the ability to force you to play football. If you don't want to practice and you are subject to be fined, then we're going to fine you. You're going to get six grand today. It's going to be 10 grand tomorrow, and it'll be 14 for the third practice. We're allowed to do that under the collective bargaining agreement that your union and the owners collectively bargain. So we've gotten to this point, and we had a trade in place. You didn't want to go where we had a trade in place and our negotiation has been so choppy and we haven't been able to get this done. Well, guess what, Brandon? It's August 28th. Dan Dibley's daughter is about to turn two and we're done. We're done here. So you either play under contract or you don't play. And if you don't play, we're going to fine you. And if we can suspend you for conduct detrimental, we might do that. And so you'll make nothing. Good day, sir. Is your last offer still on the table? My last offer is no longer on the table. Okay. I mean, that, it's just so you're, you're with it. me. You're with me. I mean, what was our last offer? If it was twenty nine, I don't know. If it's, I, I don't even know. If we offered twenty nine, and he's steadfast that he wants thirty, and we already offered twenty six, and he had a chance to make thirty two and a half in New England, and he wants thirty here, or he wants thirty in Pittsburgh, or he wants whatever he wants. Enough is enough. Yeah. We've already been through it. And so today's the day. We're getting started for week one, and you're in the building, reportedly, and you still don't want to practice? We're not even looking for you to go out there and, and get pads on and get hit. We're just looking for you to show up and run around. And so we get a, get a look to see what shape you're in, how you're doing, and a chance for you to be a 49er again. Like, maybe that's uh, the conversation we, we should have because I don't think that either of us have been here before, and, and we've arrived here maybe today. Um, I, I, I was certainly in this neighborhood, but but I am now firmly with my Sharpie marking this line today. And and I do wonder if a lot of you out there are in the same spot. 888-957-9570. You still want the Niners to sign Brandon to an extension? I don't, no. Neither do I. I mean, have I, him play the fifth-year option. Yeah. Have I, him go I, out there and show us. Show me that you really want to be a 49er. Check this out. Just because we referenced it before we continue that conversation, here's John Lynch when asked about newly signed to the practice squad wide receiver Terrace Marshall. Terrace Marshall. Thank you. But pay close attention to what he says about being a wide receiver on the 49ers. That's just a good football player. We were very fortunate to get in the building. I don't know what went on Carolina. Um, you know, I know that I got on the phone with Terrence along with Leonard Hankerson and Kyle and just told him about the way we do things, um, what we thought of him coming out of college, and that this could be a great uh, landing spot for him. He's going to have to earn everything, but it's a fun place for receivers to come and uh, and thrive and whatever your best is I think you'll find it here so we're excited for that opportunity whatever your best is I think you're going to find it here for wide receivers yeah specifically <laughs> which I mean when you think about it it's kind of nonsense because nobody gets more than like 100 targets so well, your number like C.D. Lamb is looking at that quote and laughing saying yeah 
That's where my best is going to be. I'm going to go there and share targets with well, Kittle and Debo okay. and McCaffrey. I, I get where you're coming from, but hold on. He he could be meaning that in a different way than stats. Oh, he does. He you know does. what I mean? He means like, because Brandon was incredibly efficient last year, and George Kittle and Debo Samuel ended up on a Netflix series. So let's not act like those guys are not succeeding at a very high level, and there's a tension here. It's a big-time fan base, and it's a big-time team, and you can win, and you've got a good young quarterback, and you can perform, and you can be efficient. Can you get 170 targets? No. No. You can do all those other things, and I think that that's fair because there are a lot of NFL teams out there where as a wide receiver, you're dead. You're complete dust. If you don't have a quarterback, if you don't have a situation, you look what happened to Justin Jefferson last year. It's the best wide receiver in the game. Now, part of it was he got hurt. A big part of it, the biggest part of it. But when he returned, he didn't look the same because Kirk Cousins is not there and you got Nick Mullins running around throwing the football. So I I, I get where he's coming from, at least to a certain degree. I, I just think let's let's take a breath and remember that this, I know for a lot of you, this is just about this year. But I think for the 49ers, it's not. And and if and if this is the way he's going to conduct himself, then I am absolutely out on the idea of a five-year extension that costs me Debo. Yeah, yeah. No. it costs you more than Debo. Yeah, it's going to cost you a lot more than just Debo. No, and no, I'm, no. I'm with you there. And I've thought all along that Brandon was more important than Debo from the start of this process. Brandon's a better receiver. Debo's older and has a tendency to get injured. And then you, you look at everything we've seen from the receiver doc to the boombox guy. And even earlier today on social media, you're seeing some video of Kyle Shanahan and Debo at the practice. And Debo right up to Kyle, daps him up, warm exchange. And you've heard Kyle talk about Debo and John talk about Debo and the importance that he brings to the team, not only between the lines, but Debo in the locker room and Debo as the boombox guy and the leadership of Debo. And so I've done a complete 180 on who's more important. And if you're not going to have two receivers making that much money, and I don't think that you should, well, then what are we even doing with a Brandon Ayuk extension? You're not going to pay him 30 and then Debo's making 26 next year. That's not going to work for this model. Well, and I mean, take Trent Williams as a warning shot with regard to signing Brandon Ayuk. Just because you signed Brandon for a five-year extension, how do I know we're not doing this two years from now again? How do we know? How do we know that Brandon's not going to be like, so by the way, that's not okay anymore. That's not okay. Yeah. Ricky Pearsall just got $48 million a year. (laughs) I want new money. I need 50. That's right. How do you know? I want to be paid paid, Um, like Trent said. that, That was the funny one. I did like that. Yeah, they don't think it's so funny because he wants, he probably no, wants know. 30. Um, I don't know what he wants. Well, the top I, of the market's 28 a year. So yeah, I, I don't think, want to get derailed off this hot Brandon Ayuk yeah, topic, but fresh Ayuk. I mean, Trent's still out there. Yep. So that still is, you know, I think that that's a greater concern for them right now but than I, Brandon Ayuk. But I think Trent is fair in saying in this world of non guaranteed money to an NFL player who's 36 and is going to get pounded on all day, I think it's fair for him to say, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm the best. You got to pay me this year as the best and, and at least like up the guarantees. What people don't know about Trent's contract and what's left on it is that it's severely backloaded to when he's 38 years old and, and he's very likely not going to be playing. Certainly not at a high level. He probably would get cut for $33 million in 2026. Oh, for sure. That, I, like, that money was never right. getting paid. So he's going to get 20 this year, which is wonderful, but it's $8 million below the top left tackle in the game, and he's the top left tackle in the game. Trent's not – like, Trent has a point. Yeah, and Trent if Trent gets hurt in, after week five, and it's really, really bad – Trent go bye-bye. He, he, exactly. Yeah. And there's no guaranteed money, so his 20 becomes about seven, and his career probably bye is bye. over. Exactly. Yeah, Trent has a point, and Brandon had a point. And then he napalmed his point by saying no to 28 different offers. And just think, before we go back to the phones, and I know there's tons of people clamoring to get in on this great conversation, but just think if back when he was getting his suit ready in February or March, if he just would have taken that offer, if it was $26 million or whatever the Niners had offered initially, if he just said, okay, and he, he gets $26 million a year, four years and 102 
forty million guaranteed. None of this is even ever discussed. No, I, dude, I am all in on Devonte Smith. That guy, I don't like the Philadelphia Eagles, but I like that guy. Yeah, just the way he. Is. I the love that gym. guy. Well, so, like a reporter, he took twenty five million a year, and a reporter went to him and was like, "Boy." You took that a little bit early. Look what's happened to the receiver market. And Devontae's like, I make $25 million per year. I'm fine. And there's a question in there. This is not just for Brandon, but it's anyone. If you were going to be happy with 26, why are you suddenly not going to be happy with 26? Just because someone else got 28. Like, to me, that's a more personal question. You were about to be all happy about 26. Then you decided overnight that it's offensive. I understand the market moving, but on a personal level, if you're happy here and you're happy with 26 on a Tuesday, you can't be like furious with it on a Friday. Totally. That's a little I mean, weird. You can be, but I mean, you can. Yeah, I, uh, yes, I guess you can be. And if you decide that you want to dig in and draw that line in the sand, well, you might get to this point where the Niners could. In good faith, just say, you know, hey, Ryan Williams, Brandon's agent, there are no more offers. You had your chance. We did all we could. Uh, have a good season. Yeah. See you on the field, and we'll see you. We'll see you. In the huddle. In the aisles. <laughs> totally. Uh, let's go to David in Brentwood. Willard and Dibbs, we're taking your calls on what the Niners should do. Brandon Ayuk has apparently defied the understanding that he would start practicing today with or without a deal, and he did not show up. David and Brentwood, hi. Thanks for calling. What's up? So my, my thinking is, how do you take the power away from Brandon Ayuk? And I, I'm thinking you satisfy him this year by giving into what he wants, paying him the money. Uh, it's a risk because he could have a crap year, and then you're stuck with him next year. But if he is under contract going into next offseason, you can trade him to wherever the heck you want, whether that's the, the Patriots or the Steelers. He doesn't have the power to say, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to find an extension now. Um, that's an interesting thought, David, but, but I bet you understand the risks that you would be taking. Like let's, and, and, and for those of you who didn't catch what David said, David, thank you very much. He's saying sign now you to the extension. And then of course you can trade them wherever you want because the other team wouldn't need to worry about signing to an extension. Well, what you tucked into your point though, was what if Brandon goes out and has a crap year? Well, if you pay him 29 million per year and he goes out and has a crap year, guess what? No one wants to trade for him anymore. So that's, that's true. That's the risk you're taking. Now no one wants to pay him $29 million a year. No one wants to acquire Brandon Ayuk. And also, you are going to have to find a team to acquire him who is going to be willing to maybe take on a player who's shown a tendency to not want to play if he's not happy. So this is something that will follow him wherever he goes. You were mentioning this before. If you're another team and he's a free agent and you inquire about Brandon Ayuk, you're going to have to ask hard questions about, dude, what happened for those totally. six months in San Francisco? You were on a really good team, and it seemed like they had a fair offer, and yet you were napalming your own career. So this is something that's going to follow him for sure. I mean, look, inside the business, they know things that we don't. But, yes, wouldn't a GM want to call Ryan Williams and go, now what was the thing about how now the Patriots offered you 33, the, the Browns offered you 30, the Steelers offered you 28, the Niners bent over backwards and found trades for all of them. I'm sure the Niners probably annoyed the hell out of you at the start of the year, but they offered you 26, and then you twisted their arm. And, and, and based on what I read, Ryan, they went up to 28, maybe even up to 29, and you still said no. Remember three weeks ago when everybody was on the five-yard line and we were working on the final year of the deal? And you still said no. What guarantee are you going to give me that you're not going to treat us like that too? Exactly. And you mentioned That's what it, I would ask. two years into the new deal yeah. when the market explodes again and now he's the 11th high, pay, highest paid wide receiver. How do we know that he's not going to come back and do this again? Oh, and by the way, Ryan, one more question before you answer that. If it doesn't go well with us, are we going to social media again all <laughs> offseason? Ryan? Do I get poop emojis if I do something that you guys don't like? Yeah. Is that what I get from Brandon and his girlfriend and brother? It's possible. Possibly. Yeah, I hear. the way it's gone. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Anthony and Concord. Hi, Anthony. Thanks for calling. What's up? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, uh, first thing, the first point I want to make is Brandon and I needs a new agent. Like, this has just been a disaster from the beginning. 
Um, and I wouldn't be surprised, like like Dib said a minute ago, all deals are off now. Like, hey, you're on your fifth year option. This is it. This is where we're at. That's why I think he's pissed. That's that's why he's not, you know, showing up for for practice now. And quite frankly, I'm I'm with you guys. I, I'm done with him. He, you know, he's he's been a huge distraction. He he keeps going back on on alleged agreements. You know, like showing up for practice at this point. And this isn't a player I want on our team down the line. This is not a player I want to sign to a long contract. So I think we should make him play on his fifth year option. If he holds out, let him hold out. We'll keep finding him. In the meantime, you know, there's other players who are willing to play. I think I think we're going to be good without these distractions. Anthony, thanks. I mean, I don't know. You know, we were we were tossing this out yesterday, Debs. I don't know where you're at on this, but like, we don't know to what level if just even emotionally or the timing of it. If in some way the the Ayuk conversation and the Trent conversation is linked, in other words, are they like, hey Trent? Here's kind of what we're thinking, but we can't really totally pull the trigger yet because we've got to figure out exactly what's going into the escrow account for Brandon. Do you know how fr- – I don't know that that's the case, but if it was on any level, how freeing would it be to just be like, so we're done with Brandon? Totally. Just give it to Trent. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. Trent, 30. We'll give you, yeah. we'll give you three for 100, but the third year is 40 million, and your guarantee is going to be 40 million. So that third year is going to be God. funny money again. We'll give you 30, 30, and 40. And of that, we'll give you $40 million sure. guaranteed. Dude, you're hot. You're coming in hot. Well, he's going to get more than 28. Uh, he's, so the average annual. 28.1, then. Well, maybe 3 and 90. The Dude, average annual is going to be 30. You are 36. Fine. Like, I know you're you Trent. Can, you can I, be an ageist if you want. No, but no, no. Well, you have nasty. to be in the NFL. Of course. Well, you're not giving him five years. No. He, you're going to give him two, two years of real money. Two years of real money, yes. So you give him. At 33 a year? Not probably 30 a year. You said three and 100. Well, and the average annual, the third year would be funny money, and he would never see any of that. Yeah, I'm not paying him like Nick Bosa for crying out loud. No, but you're going to pay him probably $40 million yeah, guaranteed. You, you want to get to 28.1, let's get you to 28.1, and, and, and we can do that for two years, and we'll guarantee two-thirds of it. Sure, I would do that. Yeah, I think he's going like, to want more than that, but really? and he's worth more than Yeah, you've heard the reports this that's, week, people that, saying that he's the best player in the NFL. That, and, that would be the highest paid left tackle in the game. Sure. And we would be guaranteeing you money into age 37 season. Like, that's fair. Oh, it's it's all fair. And, I, and, and, and we're having this conversation without knowing a damn thing about, like... Yeah, because he's been silent. Current, there have been no poop and, emojis well, and no TikTok. Right, and no... But we don't know, like, what's the cap space situation? What's Jed willing to do? Like... I don't know the answers to any of those questions, but if on any level Trent is delayed because of Brandon, move on. Well, yeah, I think that move that's... Move on and go get Trent. And the tone I heard from uh, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch today were both uh, indicative that there's conversations, good conversations, and, and that that deal's going to get done. I have think we, you set the deadline for today was your over-under. For, for Trent? For Trent. No, I just predicted it would be today. Gotcha. There's still time. Not looking good. No, but that but would be okay. that would be a definite yeah. sign about the Brandon deal. Sure. If they oh, just God, pivoted yeah. and got it done yeah. that quick. Okay.